What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode one of the Psychotic and Iconic Sports Podcast. My name is Mike. I'm here with my co-host, Nick, and my other co-host, Mikey P. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Ant Saracusa. He's a young and up-and-coming artist from Blackwood. Everybody go give him a follow at Just Ant. He did our intro song. Uh, secondly, I want to give a shout out to Phil Nace, who is our producer and handling all the stuff that we are unable to do. Uh, basically, here at Psychotic and Iconic, we're going to be talking about all things sports related from sports cards investments, buy, sell, trade, long term investments, who's a quick flip. We'll be talking about fantasy drafts. Uh, we will be talking about basketball, football, baseball, everything. And uh, that's really it. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Nick. What's up, everybody? I'm Nick. Uh, I'm a sports car collector myself. I buy, sell on eBay. I go to local car shows around the area. Um, I'm a big Tom Brady fan. I am actually wearing his high school jersey. I don't have a Bucks one yet, but it's it will suffice. So with that, I'm going to pass along to uh, Mike. What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. If you know me, I'm a huge uh, five for five sports <coughs> guy. I go all out with each of them. I'm a Philly sports guy. I love me some Napoli, too, but I keep it real with all my teams. So there's no bias over here. Um, have a master's in analytics, so I'm a stats and numbers guy for sure. The stats never lie, but neither does the eye test, right, guys? I agree. Never does. So I have no bias over here. None of us do. So we're going to keep it real with you guys. Um, we'll just call it how we see it. We're not going to hold back. And, um, yeah, Nick, that jersey, man. Whew. Oh, man, I appreciate I, it. i never seen that before. But you know what? I, hey, for all the listeners out there, so Nick's got Tom Brady's high school jersey on. I didn't even I didn't even know he had like, that. That is insane to me. The Padres. But you know what, Nick? I knew you were gonna do something like that. I knew he was gonna wear a Tom Brady jersey. He's the biggest Tom Brady lover on the planet. So I had to counter him and I wore his nemesis jersey, the great big dick Nick Foles. <laughs> the I only Foles, the only Tom Brady killer that exists. Wow, Eli Manning's there. I wasn't going to bring I don't it up. Want, yeah, damn it. I Eli, I gonna, Eli did it twice. <laughs> I wasn't going to. Eli did it twice. I'm going to say to everybody, before we get started, no disrespect will be tolerated on this podcast <laughs> on the GOAT's name, okay? That's, that's, what's, that's just the bottom line, okay? We'll see. All right? We'll see. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. And, yeah, we'll see. I got to say, <laughs> also, just going off of Mike, shout out Phil because he is the GOAT. Like, Absolutely. We would not be able to do this without Phil. He's our, our tech director and producer. Phil, you want to say something to our audience real quick? I'm just doing the housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Phil, man. We love you. Thank you so much yeah, for everything you've done for us to get set up, man. We really appreciate it, man. Thank you. It is. So let's jump right into it, guys. What do you think? <laughs> uh, let's start with the NBA. It's been uh, a crazy playoffs, and I'm really excited to talk about the Hawks versus Bucks because last night's game was absolutely crazy. Oh, my God. It was crazy. Last night changed my whole uh, Trey Young analysis. Damn, he's a cocky what was your little guy. He but what was your walk, Trey though. Though. What My was thing your... with Trey was I always felt like he was just – I don't know. I don't know. There was just something about him that – I was always telling you there was just something about him like I didn't like, and I thought he was getting overhyped. And then last night to do that and to win your first three road playoff games, like he ha he's one to zero in all three of those. I mean, to put forty eight on the Bucks, I mean that's that's crazy, man. Forty eight piece, yeah. wow. It's, I mean, last night was really crazy watching that game. It's unbelievable. Like I was just sitting there, like, are they gonna do something to try to stop him? Because like, if he goes just to let the them finals, take open shots on the perimeter all night. And then when he did the shimmy, that was it for me. Ooh. I'm like, okay. I'm in on him. All, all disrespect. I was like, I'm in. It was great. Loved it. It was and wild. It, and he made it. It was wild <laughs> disrespectful, but I love that shit. Like, on, honestly, that's why I'm a big Trey fan, because, like, he's like, he's like that. He's he, having fun. Yeah. He, he, he loves, walks the walk. He loves right? to go against the crowd, and I love that. That's the kind of player I like. I think my issue with Trey Young was, is when he was playing against the Sixers, I wanted him to do bad, and I kept waiting for him to fail, and he just wasn't. He came up when it mattered most. I think the Sixers did the best job of limiting him, though, for sure. There's no one else that's been able to to this point. I mean, he was still hanging 25, 30, and 36, I think, or something like that. I mean, he's putting up, like, ridiculous numbers. Not for a first your first run in the playoffs. I mean, it's just – it really is remarkable, man. He's he's starting to get into that category where they're going to start saying that the, the, um, the Mavericks lost that trade. 
Well, look, they already shocked the world. I mean, the, the, he's just teeing <laughs> off every game. He literally just teed off. Like, 48 points, guys. That's just insane. And what did I say the other day when we were talking about it? That I thought the Bucks, I thought that they would get out Sweet. of there in four or five. Yeah, five max. That's not happening. I told you. <laughs> That's not happening. That's just not happening. Before the playoffs started, right, I said, watch out for Trey Young. I did. You did. I did. To, to your credit, you did. I did. He could shoot. He did. He said he, that. He rallies his troops. Hats off to him. But what do you think about last night's game? Do the Hawks have a, have a shot to yes. actually go to the finals? Or was it just a game one blimp for the Bucks and they can rally back and just so dominate after that? Going back to one thing that we talked about before, Mike Budenholzer, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is with that guy. I just... I, like Terrible. again, I feel like he got out coached again by Nate McMillan. So disappointing. It's just it's <laughs> unbelievable. It really is. I mean, granted, Chris Middleton was 0 for nine from three, I think, and Drew Holiday had thirty three. So I mean I mean, Drew has thirty three, Giannis has thirty. It's just like major bounce back for Drew Holiday. And Chris Middleton was definitely the guy that, that kind of held them back, I'd say. I mean, even if he makes two of those. Not his usual line. You know, 15 points, they expect at least at least 20, What was 25. his actual – what was his uh, – what did he shoot from the field, not in, uh, without threes? Last night, 6 yeah. of 23. Yeah, like, that's horrible. That's not going to cut it. 6 of 23? 6 of 23. 0 for 9 from 3. How yeah, many that's... points did he have? 15? 15. So he took 23 shots and had 15 points. He was a minus 13 last night on yeah, the court. Yeah, that's horrible. Uh, he was a liability. And this is, on, this is on a night where Giannis made six of eight from the free throw line. I know. I mean, they, this is a game they win nine times out of ten, right? Except when it's in the playoffs and your coach has to make adjustments. But I guess so. <laughs> he can't do it. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it's the most it. puzzling thing. I will say, though, I think the, the Bucks they're going to bounce back. I mean, look, if it took Trey 48 points to beat the Bucks, is that going to happen the whole series? Probably not. I mean, think about it. A lot of his shots were like those teardrop shots where he just... He's doing it from the free throw line. Exactly. And he just floats it in there. That's They're, they're going to have to button that up. But the only thing that I'm, I'm just like... A little thing that has me worried with the Bucks is the they only beat the Nets because they got injured. And like the Net, the Hawks are a full squad. So I don't really... I don't know. I don't, it was just a weird game. I didn't expect it. Like I expect, I expected the Bucks to really handle the Hawks. What's your pulse on this series, guys? Like, what do you think is going to happen now after that surprise win by the Hawks? What, well, do, what do you guys think? I think Game Two is a must win for the Bucks. Obviously, yeah, definitely a must win. But I, I would, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to overreact, but like, a must win. Oh yeah, they can't go down 0-2 and then go back to Atlanta. I think that's a problem. It's a must win. I don't I mean, know if they could. I don't think. I don't think they could overcome that. They're at home, so I mean, yeah, it is kind of a must win. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't I don't think that they're the type of team that could fight back from an 0-2 hole. Like they're, I said they did it against Brooklyn, but that's kind of a different story. Well, it's different because they're not they're going to be on the road in game 3 and 4 yeah. whereas they were home They were going back home. Right. right. That's so, what I mean. So it's a little bit different of a scenario. I just don't think that they're that mentally tough team to be able to do that like the Clippers or you know. So it's 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 I don't know. That that that, that series just got really interesting after last night. Yeah. And I think what also hurts the actual like Hawks team is Bogdanovich's knee. He just didn't look himself. He looked like he was like half speed. He and, was just shooting. And the, But the thing is, too, is what I was touching on with uh, Mike, uh, Mike Budenholzer, Brooke Lopez is probably not playable again. He was horrible. They were running yeah. him off oh the God. floor. <laughs> I know. So I don't really know. And if they go small, the problem is, is now you're playing into the Hawks game because now you can get John Collins to be able to get down low and do – you know, and do his thing. So it's really tough. But again, that's what I'm saying. Like coaching adjustments, I just I don't know if I trust I don't know if I trust the Bucks to be able to do that. Maybe. And like I said, maybe I am overreacting. We'll find out soon. But those are just things that I was watching, and I'm just like, okay, they might be in a little bit of trouble. I'll give you guys a <laughs> prediction. I'm gonna st I'm gonna start by saying this though. Nate McMillan's performance since taking over this job is one of the best we've ever seen. Thirty six. This is 15. insane. 36 and 15. This team over. did not belong anywhere near the conference finals. This is crazy. The, the way they're playing, their resilience. Um, I mean, I'm not going to count them out of this series. I think I was dismissing them personally. I think 
I was I was going with Bucks and five originally. I thought they were going to lose to the Knicks. And I thought that was yeah. Originally, that's how I felt too. I, I, I had, had the Knicks in seven. I had Hawks in seven, but <laughs> you still didn't all feel I'm good. Doing. So I, I, I don't know what to say anymore. Like I, I'm thinking, where I'm leaning now, as of this minute, is Bucks and six. But I really do think, like, man, if the Hawks can just take care of business at home, I mean, that they're up three one if that happens. I think if it's two two going into Game Five, Bucks take it. Yeah, like I feel like the. The Hawks already stole one, but if they, like if they lose tomorrow, the Hawks and it's one one, and they go back to Atlanta and they win both, the Bucks are in, the Bucks are in trouble. So I'm going I'm going Bucks in six, subject to change. Yeah. What do you guys say, Nick? I'm gonna go Bucks in seven. I got the Bucks going to the finals along with the Clippers, even though the Clippers it's not looking too hot right now. But that was my. You know, before the playoff prediction, it was Clippers versus Bucks. I had Clippers taking it home, so I'm gonna s- stick with my pick. I'm taking the Bucks. Your bracket's looking nice, brother. Oh, it's looking great. <laughs> I've been really good this playoffs. I know. Yeah. As much as I hate to say it, I you haven't picked the wrong series yet. You're right. I, I mean, I know. He took you the, had the Hawks, Hawks over hell. the Knicks. You had the Hawks over the Sixers. I got free dinner for this man. Here we go. I need to get in on this stuff. Here we go. Thank maybe, you. Maybe we need to I mooch know. off Thank of Mike. Thank you so much. That, I know. I know. It was like the best dinner of all time, too. I know. I know. You know? It was yep. great. It was delicious. Yep, it was. I know. Can we go to the next segment, you please? Saw the, Can we speed this you up, You saw please? the steam coming off the food as, yeah. as it got delivered. It was great. It was, yep. it, just, Mike, <laughs> it was a beautiful buffalo chicken wrap. It really was. It was beautiful. The fries with the honey the mustard. Fries. It was great. Okay. I'll, I'll bail you out, Mike, as soon as you give us a prediction. Give us your prediction right now. Right now. This series. What Hawks, do you think? Hawks and seven. Ooh, I like it. I like Man, it. I like it too. Yeah, I think the Hawks are. I, I mean, it's pretty crazy to me to think the Hawks are going to be in the finals. <laughs> but I mean, like, I can't even. I can't believe this right now. I the mean, Hawks. I'll be honest with you. John Collins is looking like a star. But here's yeah. the and here's the and we're going to talk about thing him later. Me. Yeah. The craziest thing for me is too. I actually found myself last night rooting for the Hawks, and I don't know why. I, I just <laughs> it was too. Trey Young. Like I was actually watching him, and I'm like, damn, bro, go off. I was really rooting for him, like, I, like, you know, it was it was wild. It's funny you say that. I actually shot you a message last night, and I was like, "Yo, I'm weirdly rooting for the Hawks." I don't know why. And I texted him right back. I was like, "So am I. I'm I'm enjoying watching Trey Young play." Yeah. It, I'm telling you, when he did the shimmy for me, I'm like, "Okay, that's it." I was like rooting for the Hawks, but I have the Bucks going to the finals. It was weird. I don't know why. I think everyone takes pleasure watching the Bucks lose. Because they just constantly disappoint every single year. So I expect it, I just and I enjoy them. it, I don't too. trust them. Yeah, I, I don't I trust never, them I never do. I, don't, I mean, I just don't. You probably don't trust them because Giannis doesn't have a jump shot. So it's yeah, not he can't like, do anything. He's not exactly. even the problem right now. He's actually it's not playing him. really yeah. well. He's, he's playing awesome. Six of yeah. eight from the free throw line. Like, I'm just like... He's you can't ans- wait. You can't waste those type of performances no. from him. He's this answering the bell, and I gotta yeah. you know tip my hat to him along with Trey Young. Because everybody I, slept on him. I called, and, I know. called out Giannis. Unfortunately, though, Giannis gets the blame because he's a he's a superstar. So he gets all the blame when they lose. That's he just should how it works. this time, of course. Yeah, but, yeah, you know. If you're but, if you're the CEO of the company, right, and it goes to shit, obviously you're gonna get the blame, right? Yeah. So there you go. He runs that. I team. think. The, I mean, my my biggest issue is the coach. Yeah. He's to me the number one blame, but. I mean, that's a different topic for a different day. Well, Nate McMillan is a really good coach because he allows he's his awesome, players man. to be themselves. He's awesome. Man. He, he, he does. He really is. He does. You know how many times, like, if, if, if he had, like, a Greg Popovich, you think Trey Young is doing the shimmy? No. Let's be real. But he's Probably allowing him not. to be himself. That's what makes him great because he's comfortable. It's rhythm. It's rhythm. He's being himself. He's yeah. playing basketball. He's having fun. He's not under these strict. He's walking up and down the court, smiling, ba- taking bows and stuff. And I'm like screaming at fans, damn, man. yelling at the refs. Man, like he's, he's really just, here. He's just he's just a free spirit, and I I salute that. And that's why he's balling right now. And yeah, man, I'm a I'm a I'm a Trey Young guy. Yeah, let's let's see how this goes, guys. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, but let's let's, let's, let's move, move on. on to uh, Suns and Clips. Ooh. Suns are up 2-0 in the series. Um, they play Game Three tonight. It's over. Tonight, uh, 9 o'clock, it's in uh, L.A.? Yeah, it's over. It's over? It's over. They go up 3-0 tonight. And I think it's, yeah, it's over. Chris Paul's coming back, yeah, so that's a, that's a huge yeah. deal. And that's I don't I don't think deal. Kawhi can play no matter what. If he's got a hurt, uh, he's got a hurt knee, I just, I don't see it. I'll take the Clippers tonight. I think they're going to win tonight and make it really interesting. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I mean, obviously, like, 
I'm taking the Clippers. I'm taking Clippers. Well, you have to ride with them. I have to. Oh, it's okay. over now. I was riding with them too because of my bracket, but just just watching the Suns right now, they are they're they're the they're the champions. They're I can win the I can switch my picks constantly now though because I've been wrong on every single series. I haven't picked one series yet. I want to stick with my Clippers pick here, but I I just don't know if I can. I I will I will you know what Nick I'll go with you. I'm going to say Clips win tonight. They make it interesting because they've been a resilient group. Mm-hmm. They're, they've been playing well at Staples Center recently. So I'll take them for the win tonight. But series, oh, I'm really like, it would take all of my strength to take the Clippers right now. The Suns just look so damn good. They're good, man. They They're look head, they so look head and shoulders but, uh, better than everyone. I mean, they do. But if you look at the scores in the last two games, it was relatively close. And they were in Phoenix. That's why I think the Clippers are going to have some confidence going in this game. And I think they're going to win this game. And I think game four could be really interesting. That's going to be the series right there. Yep. Game four is going to be the series. The thing is, though, I was watching um, First Things First this morning, and Nick Wright said it, too. They have, they've played 16 games in the last 32 days. That's wow. a lot. Fatigue a lot. could be setting in a little bit. That's um, what he was saying. Like he just thinks that they're totally out of gas, and I agree. Look, because like I said, man. they're hurt, and Chris Paul is coming back on rest. But it wasn't games, like he had anything. He these had games were so close, though. Like I, I can't just dismiss them. Without, but I'm not going to ignore what the Suns are doing right now. What they're doing is phenomenal. But I, I think, yeah, the Clips will respond. You could make an argument that Monty Williams and Ty Lue are the top two coaches in basketball. And I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> you could probably make that case. To be honest, you really can. I mean, that's that's awesome, man. This has I been mean, the best playoffs for basketball I've ever watched in my life. I've been enjoying it because the parity in the league. Like, I don't know who's going to win. I, I enjoy that. And it's that. never like that for basketball. Yeah, because before it never. was like Golden State. It was the Cavs. It was the Lakers. The it was anywhere LeBron or Curry. It was always them. Now you're, somebody's going to get their first ring, and that's what's really exciting about yeah. this. Because you got CP3, number one. That's who I'm rooting for. Trey Young. I want the Suns to win. Giannis and um, Paul George. It would probably be really good for the league if a small market team won it. Just because now that's just it, that's that doesn't normally happen in the NBA. Right. I I mean, I kind of almost gravitate towards the Suns right now too. I would love to see them win. Uh, Monty Williams, another Sixers transplant. You got Chris Paul with no ring, like you said. Uh, Mikhail Bridges, Nova guy, I, and I'm supposed to hate Nova. I'm a Thanks, temple. Sixers. I'm a temple guy, but <laughs> Sixers um, traded him. Yeah, I can't believe he's not a Sixer. Imagine what he he'd be doing on that roster right who, now. Who who did we trade him for? Uh, Zaire Smith. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought so. It's a lot uh, of upside, right? Yeah, a lot of. Did he ever run a crack the lineup? <sighs> a lot of upside. He went to the G League. <laughs> <laughs> After he broke his foot. And then didn't he get a second injury? And that's why they put him in the G League for his, uh, what's it called, his rehab? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. <laughs> he said a lot of upside, but he's in the G League. It's unbelievable. I just, I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't understand, I don't understand it. He's got a lot of upside. He's on JV. Oh, I love it. I love it. Meanwhile, so, Mikael Bridges is literally one of the best 3 and D guys in the league already. And he wanted to play for the Sixers. I remember when they traded him on draft of night. Course. Of course. Of course. His mom was screwed. excited but at, uh, in the stands and stuff. It's just, it's crazy, man. It really is. Poor management. That's what I call it. I'm um, used to it, though, because I'm a Philly fan. So I'm used to them just doing stupid shit always. What was that? That was under the Colangelo regime, right? Yeah. Who's? Because I, I have trouble talking about his name. That, that whole regime, oh, my God, the NBA forced it really? on us. I still, I can't get over it. I'm a hanky guy. I will always be best. a Yankee guy. He was the best. He sacrificed. He died for their sins. He died for their sins, is right. Who was... Hinky's last year was what year? Who was Colangelo's first pick? Was it Fultz? <laughs> Colangelo, I, mean, I think, was the one who I traded so. out of three well, to he, get Fultz. It was him, yeah. That was, that was Colangelo who did that. I don't know if it was his first draft. Speaking of Fultz, so... You want to go right into that? I was actually looking on eBay the other night. And I was just curious. I was looking at John Collins. I'm looking to invest in him. I think he's a beast. I think next year you can. He is. He's, he's, his stock's going to rise. He's the man. Um, he's been really improving almost every year. I mean, he looks really good. Every game. I he looks like. great. Like the, the playoff is not even getting to him. Like he feels, he looks comfortable. So 
I, it was funny you mentioned Markel Fultz, right? So I was going on eBay, and I, I noticed that his Prism PSA 10 uh, prices, card number one, 2017 Panini Prism, Markel Fultz, rookie, PSA 10, number, card number one, was going for 80 to to $100. And I looked at the population of it. It was 516, right? So then I looked at John Collins, and I'm looking at 2017 Panini Prism, John Collins, Rookie, PSA 10, card number 109. And I noticed it was going for like 55 to $70. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, what? And oh, it has a population of 594, which is a little bit more than Markel Fultz. But that's very like super minor in the grand scheme of things. I just found it interesting that Markel Fultz was a, like almost the same price, if not more, than John Collins. When he texted me out of here, he texted me that last night. And I was thinking about it. I was looking on Google and just looking up stuff. And I cannot figure that out for the life of me. Like, it just do- it makes no sense. I don't understand. My that. jaw just dropped. I, like, unless, are you kidding me? Unless what? they're just totally down on John Collins, which I don't know why. How? But I, at that point, then you're saying you're high on Markel Fultz. And like I said, Markel was playing. He was playing all right before. He, he improved his game. Yeah, he had 12 or 13, averaging 12 or 13 before he tore his ACL. But, I mean, to have them in the same conversation is crazy. I can't even believe this right now. I can't believe it. That's stunning. Weirdest thing ever stunning. when you texted me that. Yeah, so for all the listeners out there, buy up John Collins in the offseason. Uh, I mean, at 70 bucks, you can't beat that. And I see this price going to at least 150 in the offseason. Easily. Especially if they make the finals. Especially if they make the finals. If they make the finals, it's... it's and, to they, be- and they win a game or two, and he has a 20, 25-point night in one of those games. Yeah. I mean, even if he, even if they lose and he has a strong Eastern Conference Finals, it, I think it would be the same result because the hype that's going to get built up right before the season starts in October. Oh, my God. You're going to double your money. Because now, next year, when they start doing predictions and all that, and they got all this experience under their belt that's invaluable, the Atlanta Hawks next year, probably they're going to be a problem. They're going to be good. I... I- I was saying to you guys, I thought that they were going to be scary like one, two years, add a couple more pieces. That's what I was saying. Scary. That's they're what scary I was saying now. earlier. Yeah. I know. They're scary now. It was just interesting to me because, I mean, Markel Folds coming off an injury, and he's like the number one pick. Like, he's regarded as a bust. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, call it what course. it is. He's a bust, right? Yeah. Which is whatever. He's still in the league. Good for him. He's got a job and stuff like that. I'm not downgrading that. But usually, like, when you're investing in a player, he's got to have some, like, oomph. Yeah. Go for the yeah, like, oomph. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but he needs that oomph. oomph. Yeah, That's he's got to have the juice, right? Yeah. He's got to have it. some juice. But, like, if if you're already in people's heads as, like, regarded as a bust, it's probably not a good, smart investment unless he goes bananas next year, which I don't see. Nah. I mean, nah. he's on the magic. The ma- I was going to say the magic are terrible. I think they just got a new head coach, right? They fired their coach, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. I, I can't think of the name. You want to look that up? Yep. But, yo, Nick, actually, this might be a good time to, to get right into the the next card conversation. Aiden Collins? What do you think? I mean. I have a question for you guys. I've been tossing and turning about this. John Collins or DeAndre Aiden? So DeAndre Aiden's prices right now, they are currently going for. Check this out. Before before the game, right before the game winner that he hit, which was beautiful, by the way, that oh, that yeah. pass was ridiculous. They Shout out Brett Brown. Shout didn't. out Brett Brown, guys. That they was didn't his hire play. Anyone yet. The Magic didn't hire anyone yet. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Who, well, who wants that job? <laughs> yeah, not me. <laughs> yeah, for real. So um, going back to that, right? So I was looking at DeAndre Ayton's prices before that game, where, before the the dunk, um, the buzzer beater. Yeah. And they were a hundred bucks a piece. His his PSA ten card number two seventy nine two thousand eighteen Panini Prism um, DeAndre Ayton rookie card. Uh, it was going for a hundred bucks. And then I looked after the game after that buzzer beater, it went up twenty five percent. Damn! In a matter of seconds, hype. Like twenty five percent in in an instant. So they so now they're about they're floating around 125, 135 ish, depending give or take, right? Depending on if there's bidding or buy it now offers and stuff like that. So I just found find it really interesting, but I'm really tossing and turning like I think DeAndre Ayton is you a know beast. My, you know my answer oh, to that. Yeah. Like I, I I like watch him and I'm like, yo, he's really good. He could do everything. Yeah. He fits that team so well. Because he's a center and he plays like a center. Right, exactly. He's just scratching the surface. 
Honestly. I know. He and plays he, his part. Yeah, like a sequel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he no, he is though. He really he's I've been saying that since the beginning of the year. I love DeAndre Eaton. I mean, Nick, when you when you first mentioned that subject, like man, that really got me thinking. That's a really good question. Who who would you take? I mean, are you talking short term, long term, or both? Let's, I mean, let's talk short term. So okay, so say uh Say this, say Suns and Hawks in finals, right? Say their prices are Aiton's gone for 150, John Collins is gone for 100, and then the offseason breaks. Now their prices are 150 and 100. In the offseason, they technically they rise. You got, you know, you got hype, um, you know, progression on the player. People are excited to watch them and, and, and next year growing, you know, to be a better player because usually they get better. You know, they don't, they don't, you know, regress. At this age, yeah. they're, they're young. I mean, 2018. Unless you're Ben Simmons. <laughs> yeah, well, that's. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, get to that. We'll Don't get you to worry. That. We'll get to that very shortly. But um, yeah, no, I, I just, for me, it would have to be John Collins. On the short? On the short. Wow. Because I think he's, he's cheaper. Well, you think you could probably get more return on your investment? I think I could. Right. So, so like, say, say I bought ten John Collins rookie cards, PSA tens, um, for a hundred bucks, right? And I'm a thousand dollars into it. I think that card's doubling in the off season. Personally, based on my experience in the last what year and a half, I've been kind of really sinking my teeth into the eBay world. Um, based on my experience, that's going up to. Two and a half X. My thing with those two is I kind of feel like right now they're the same the same player in terms of they're both young and they're rising. So I don't really feel like right now I feel like it's really difficult to say that, to lean either way. Like I'm kind of in the middle. Yeah. Like to me, I would only be thinking about a long-term investment. It's a tough which one. Which I said it's DeAndre it Eaton, in my opinion. But for the short-term flip, like I don't really know. I don't really have a strong feeling left or right. That's tough. All. It's tough. I'll give you my take. I'm thinking. I'm thinking this way. Even though Collins is cheaper to buy right now, and and yeah, that's kind of shouts like, oh, return on investments looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. They're both going to go up. This sure, I, I 100 percent believe but that. I, I'm going <clears> to <throat> say this, with the Suns being the favorite, with with that alley oop game winner. Um, I think the Suns are getting a lot more buzz right now. I think yes. that they're probably going to win the championship as of this minute. I think that Aiton's going to be the better short-term guy because he's going to be on that team and he's likely going to make some noise, right? Long-term, though, I kind of lean John Collins. I think he's got a higher ceiling of the two. I, I think really? they both got a, a really high ceiling, but I think John Collins fits the current landscape of the NBA better. I think he's built better for this game. That's that, interesting. That's not a slight to Aiton either because I think he'll, he'll be able to play a traditional center because he's so athletic. So let me ask you a question. If the Suns win the finals... Does that kind of scale back teams trying to build three-point powerhouses? Does no. the game get a little bit more traditional because they just won in the traditional manner? I think that a team won't ignore a really good center in the draft, but I'm still thinking that um, three-point shooting and and that you know whatnot that's that's not going to change anytime soon. That's just how the game is. I think it's evolved to. I just think for Aiden that. is just he's just a unique player to me. Because he's so athletic. Yeah. You know? I mean, he, and he's he not injury prone. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't shoot threes, but again, I don't want my center doing that. And he don't need to shoot threes. The thing that makes him unique is he can actually go out and guard on the perimeter and he can run the so long, he can run the dude. floor. Like Whoa. My fault. Oh, family. <laughs> I, I, as soon as I said that, I'm like, fuck. Huh? <laughs> pause, pause, yeah. pause. Yeah, pause on that. No, I I I I watch John Collins. He's just like into the game. Like he's always around the he's ball. A dog. He's always around the ball. But like with those two players' comparisons, it's actually for me what makes it hard is the the co stars on that team. You got Trey Young with Collins, and then you got D Book with Aiton. Like they're they're gonna overshadow them all the time. So for me, it's like. I don't know, you know. That's what but I'm. That's exactly that's, what I'm talking but about. But that's the thing, though. Like, I can see John Collins becoming like a legit star number two guy. Um, Do you think he's better than Cam Reddish? Ooh, Cam Reddish. Wow. Because he's not even playing. Yeah, I know. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, to me, if Cam comes back and he's really good, 
John Collins might get a little suffocated? That's a really tough question. I mean, kind of feel... And the other guy, uh, Hunter. DeAndre Hunter? Yeah, he's yeah, hurt too. He's, he's pretty good. Yeah. The Hawks are good. The Hawks are a really good team. They are. They got a lot of pieces on their team that know, fit the mold really well. They'll probably have some cap space too. I mean, just... Yeah, just, they're all on... They're all on early deals. Yeah. Do they become an attractive free agency destiny? Because maybe it's a basketball. I would scene. lean yes. You know, it's probably a basketball city. The A, you know. Yeah. Got to got to go play for the A. Yeah, because I, I think, don't know. <laughs> yeah, see you in EA. <laughs> <laughs> when he was yelling that to the Knicks fans, I'm I love at that him, shit, like, dude. That was that was that was real. I'm like, this dude is crazy. That's when I fell in love with him. And he backed I'm like, it up. He I'm backed like, it up since I love that it. moment. Oh, I took pleasure in watching the Knicks suffer. I loved it. Oh, I man. loved it. Absolutely. I don't care that they, they improve this season. I, I'm happy to dump on them anytime, any day. <laughs> good, good for you, Trey Young. Good for you. They lost, <laughs> right? He walks off the court. See y'all in the A. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else find it funny, too? After the Knicks beat them, they won one game. And started screaming, we want Brooklyn, and then lost in five. <laughs> we want Brooklyn. We want Brooklyn. For real bold. When I was at the Sixers game, you sure? when they played uh, Washington, I was at game four, and um, or game five, whatever. And I was, I'll never forget, they started chanting, we want Brooklyn. I was with my brother-in-law, and I'm like, me and him looked at each other, and we're like, uh, we don't want Brooklyn. No. Stop chanting that. Yeah, we're good. I want the worst team possible. Can we just get through this series? Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember saying, too, actually, me and him were saying, we're like, no, we want Atlanta. We want Atlanta. Because this so. is the Sixers. Don't forget. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sixers, for, for that. I, I really appreciate it. Hey, Mike, you know what? Perfect segue. Let's talk Sixers because we've been holding back. Like, <laughs> Let's do it. It's really tough to get into this subject. We've been waiting for it, though. It's Let's go. It's like, I mean, I'm upset. So the, the Sixers fall in seven to the Hawks. They were a clear favorite in the series. They lost at home. I mean, they had a series advantage at one point. What the hell happened? Like, who's to blame for this collapse? This is one of the most epic collapses we've ever seen by by a one seed, um, by a favorite. This is just... I think the I, blame I goes it. to the organization as a whole for coddling Ben Simmons. It definitely goes to Ben Simmons, and it goes to Doc Rivers. We were always texting about this, and we kept saying, I kept saying, what is he doing with this all-bench lineup? Oh, yeah. I mean, I you're up 20 <laughs> at the end of the third quarter. You Very put, confusing. You your, yeah, you have your all-bench lineup in. They cut it to 14. You call a timeout and put your all-bench lineup back in, and they get it down to, I think, eight. And I just, I never understood his rotations. Like, Tyrese Maxey comes in, has a great game. The next game, he gets his minutes taken away by George Hill. Shake Milton doesn't play the whole game and starts the fourth quarter in the biggest game of the year. So I was looking at Doc Rivers, and I'm like, what is going on here? And that's what I was saying. He's starting to approach that overrated ca category because he just keeps doing really dumb shit, and it's costing him series. It did it with the Clippers. I mean, that was a total meltdown. I mean, it was just like this. It was the same exact scenario, just a total meltdown in a Game 7. And the whole Ben Simmons thing, I just... I want nothing to do with him. They need to trade him. They need to build his value up and get rid of him because it's been four years. He hasn't shown you he's willing to improve. If he wasn't 6'10", he'll be changing oil at Jiffy Lube. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is not. he's just not good. And I'm so tired of because they say, oh, his, his defense, his assists, they're deflecting away from scoring. Doc Rivers was doing it. Daryl Morey did it. Every, Brett Brown was doing it. Your point guard needs to be able to score. He needs to be able to shoot. Right now, would people take Ben Simmons or Trey Young? Trey Young's a worse defender, but... He can go out and get you 48. Ben Simmons is getting you eight. I'm absolutely choosing Trey Young over Ben Simmons. It's, it's crazy. not even like a debate for me. We were talking about and I was saying it too. I would take Lonzo Ball right now over Ben Simmons. Lonzo Ball oh. would have helped the Sixers more. Lonzo God. Ball would have helped the Sixers more. And Ben Simmons with the free throws. I mean, oh my God. It was it was absolutely horrendous to watch. Like, no wonder he's having mental health issues, dude. That was embarrassing. However, I had some yeah, time to... It's not going to help anything, right? <laughs> I just went to the carnival with my, with my two-year-old son and knocked down free th three free throws in a row and won a Philly shirt. And I'm terrible. You got a 10-day contract right they, now. Yeah, they, I'm signing yeah. you. The, the Sixers <laughs> could have used you. They really could have because Ben Simmons is garbage. <laughs> oh, He's okay. actually garbage. So I had some time to ponder about this topic. Um, it's been, what, almost... 
five days now since they lost. I mean, there's been a lot of emotion, so, so you had to digest. So you know? I digested it, and I thought about it. I want him the fuck out of here. I want this dude <laughs> Scream out of it. Philly. Scream it. I want this dude to get the fuck out of here. What is he doing? You shot three times in the fourth quarter? What, are you crazy? Wait a minute. That was over a few games. No, that was the whole series. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was talking oh, about. Seven did. games, you shoot three Actually, times in the fourth quarter? And pass up wide open dunks. Hold on. With five foot 11 oh, Trey Young on you. That one killed me. That one killed Hold me. Hold on. Hold on. Time out. If you shot three times in the fourth quarter in one game, I'm mad. You shot three times in seven games. He's horrible, dude. I guess I've been what? saying it. Nick, zero times in the last three games. Zero times in the fourth if quarter. If you play back the film when he passed up that dunk, you literally see Embiid at the top of the key and Curry on the left wing like this. Body language was just like everyone just died. Literally. Everybody was saying the same thing. I was in group chat. After I died. Group chat. Everybody was saying, <laughs> what the fuck was that? I'm going to tell you right now. And I'm a Ben guy. I literally I'm died. I'm sorry to hear that. I sunk into my chair. I was done. I knew they were done. But you know right what it there. is? You know what it is? It's his fault that he's receiving the criticism. A, you don't work hard at it. Two, you you put up video clips over the summer of you shooting. How about you show clips of you missing and not making them all? Because now you're building hype and now yep. you have expectations now. Now you're shooting yourself in the foot. Then we get into the game, you're scared to shoot. Come on. Phil, can you roll the clip up real quick uh, of Ben Simmons shooting? Have you over ever the actually summer? seen him practice some free throws either? Has he ever put no. out a video of him practicing free throws? Let's just, I no, mean, I would be embarrassed, Let's just watch too. this real quick. Let's watch this. Ben Simmons becoming a lethal shooter. League is not ready. Huh. Okay. Ooh. Hmm. I mean, he didn't it even looks hit good. the rim. It looks great, actually. What the hell happened to this guy? Kendall Jenner. Wow. I mean, Seriously. I mean, Look if, the Sixers, if this the Sixers, three pointer. <laughs> if the Sixers had this player, they're winning the they're winning the NBA. Title. If the Sixers had this player, this might be the best player in the league. That's that's what would happen if this guy could shoot. That player's never coming anywhere. Pause. He is never yeah, big pause. <laughs> this player is he's never he's non-existent. I mean, Kobe even said it. I just saw this like literally yesterday. Two years ago, Kobe says, if this man just has a mid-range game... It's over. We don't even need a three-pointer. I don't give a shit about a three-pointer. If this guy has a mid-range game and shoots 65 70% from, from the free-throw line, he might be the best player in the league. The best player in the whole league. Bro, he should... When he comes out in October, he should have to take four mid-range jumpers a game and one three, or he goes on a bench. So see, this is where... I gotta, I gotta give you my take now. I've always been a Ben Simmons guy. This series, I was just, I was just like, oh man, I can't, I can't believe what I'm seeing. You know what though? Like, yeah, you have to blame him. Um, at first, I was thinking, oh, you know, it's, it's got to be on the player. He's got a mental issue right now. Um, but I've seen some stuff trickle out the last couple of days that kind of like changed my mind about his work ethic. I mean, I never was one of those people challenging the work ethic, but his teammates, when, when. J.J. Redick or T.J. McConnell comes out in support and says, this man works harder than anybody. Yeah, they're lying. I don't know about that. I know they are. I, I got like, proof. No, I got seven all games they of gotta do, yeah. All they got to do is not speak about it at all because their reputation's on the line. And you know J.J. wants that podcast to be doing pretty well, just like us, right? So um, I don't believe the whole working hard, like I, like I think he does, but... Here's the thing. But on what? But yes. So that's what I'm getting at. So how many free throws are you shooting in practice? How many jump shots are you shooting? And then the other thing I get to is I feel like coaching has failed him. You can't coddle this guy after four years. Like he's after it after he failed the first couple of years in this department, you gotta try something new. Bring in a legitimate shooting coach. They he keep talking it, about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's get him a shooting coach. And they're letting his his half brother coach him. Like, who the hell is this guy? He's got he's got no basketball background. Get him a legitimate shooting coach. Don't let him leave the damn gym. I don't even know why that's allowed. He hasn't earned that. No. And actually, and I, look, I'm not going to dive into the the stuff that I've read about his family issues because they're deep, guys. Like, if you haven't seen this, know, you can yeah. find this on Twitter. And it's like mental health is is serious, guys. What's going on with his family? I mean, it is, it's like bad 
bad, bad shit. So I, that I was not what, to you. That was not to you. No, that's okay. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like if this was going on in my own family, I would have a lot of mental problems right now too. So I'm sure whatever it is, it didn't contribute uh, to his success because in the first half of the season, he was he was looking like a different version, right? Second half no, of the though. season, post yes, he was. He was shooting sixty nine percent from the free, free throw line, but he was two he feet had, away. He he wasn't taking jumpers. Yeah, but dude, he was he was still giving us points. I don't care how it comes, like, like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I knew I was. I knew Man. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it as soon as I said it. <laughs> Let's revise that, okay? Like, <laughs> pause. <laughs> <laughs> For real though, like all I want from him, I just wanted his career averages. Give me 16 to 18 points and we're good. And he was doing that. I mean, he was shooting what, 15 points a game. I'm okay with that. He he had to take a sacrifice so that Tobias could step up this year. Um so yeah, like I, I just I think there's a lot going on here. Get him a mental coach, get him a shooting coach, figure this out. And and what I'm getting at here, guys, is I'm not trading Ben unless it's for the right package. Because hear me out. He's still 24 years old. It has to be the right compensation. You can't just give up a player of that ilk. I don't care what you say right now. The The ceiling is off the charts. He's been a three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA defensive te uh, team, and um, Rookie of the Year, Steals leader last year. Like, this guy has a ton of value, and in league circles, they say the same thing. But this this whole refusal to shoot, because it's not it's not like oh I'm passing up shots to give it to someone else. This is a downright refusal to shoot because he is afraid of missing and he's afraid of going to the free throw line. They have to figure that out. That's an organizational failure. They failed him. Doc was supposed to fix that. That's what. That's why he was hired. He was. He gets he, coddled. I mean, Brett Brown would have taken us to the next round. This Seriously. is legitimately with the whole the whole psychological thing. It's Markel Fultz 2.0. It's the same scenario, except it he's is. a better defender and better and can and is better from assists. Okay, so what you're saying? But it's the same scenario. So what you're saying is you want to you want to keep him? No, I will trade him for the right pieces. And here and there. What I'll if you don't get my, it? I'll go down my list. What if okay? you don't get it? I'll go down my list and I'll give you the actual odds of his next team because this this kind of stands out to me. Okay, hold on one sec. I'm gonna pull that up for you. Um, but there's a there's a, a select few where not only would I trade him, but I would be willing to give up picks and players in addition to Simmons to make it work. And I think it will work. Here's why. First thing that jumps out to me. Okay, here's the odds. So first thing that jumps out is definitely not his jumper. No, absolutely not. <laughs> So here's here's the here's the the line, okay? Next NBA team Ben Simmons will play for if traded. The favorite is Blazers plus 250, next is Wizards plus 300, Spurs plus 450 and then uh all kinds of shit after that, okay? But the first two we got to unwrap. Blazers and Wizards. Okay, everyone, I think no they're shot talking team is in They're it. talking about <laughs> yeah. They're Absolutely. Talking, well, I don't want nothing to do see, with uh, okay, so, CJ Urkel. I want, no, I, I, want I agree. Time. So yeah. here, there you go. Let's let's set his value, guys. Okay. CJ McCollum, no, that's not a fair trade for the Sixers. I'm keeping Ben there. It's got to be Dame. You pay up and you bring that man in and you're winning a championship. They're not they're not trading Dame for Ben Simmons, though. No, it would be a package, though. It would have to be Simmons plus a, a, a first rounder of some sort. And, and they're going to want And Maxie. a legitimate rotation They're going to want Maxi. Maybe. Rabbit. Maybe. Right, I would include Maxi to get Dame. Absolutely, yeah, you would absolutely have to. because you, you would have to. Here's because I thing. know what Dame is. Here's my thing: we got Embiid for probably what three, four more years at max. The window is closing. I know. So if we stick with Ben, we gotta trust that he's gonna be able to take the next step next year. I don't trust it though. He hasn't shown no, me that. He I'm not investing in that. He's so, going downwards. Absolutely, he, his rookie year was his peak. So look, like this is this is another reason why like. You're, you're saying I won't invest in that, but I actually think this might be a good time to invest because someone's going to figure out how to fix this guy. It might not be the Sixers. Yeah, they're going to put him on a bench. Well, I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like it's, Ben at the line, like, you probably missed the point. His, yeah. his value's never going to be lower. <laughs> Change the lyrics. <laughs> but his, his, uh, I mean, real shit, though. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Listen, listen I understand. I understand. But his value is never going to be lower. If I'm thinking of it investment-wise, 
his value is never going to be lower. I would just put in flyers here, and I'm I'm picking out a bunch of Ben Simmons rookie cards because you could have major return on investment if he figures it out. But that's besides the point. I understand what you're saying. Well, that's to an, be that's honest with you, um, Mike, what's um, his value right now? Um, you negative. would know better than me. To be honest with you, I should have sold it before the season. It was going about almost 500, maybe 350 to 500. What is it now? It tanked. Yeah, probably two oh, hours. Yeah. It's about 175-ish. Well, that's a little higher no, than I thought, no, to be honest. No, it tanked. Yeah. And I'm mad because I should have sold it. But I believed it and I was like, okay. You still have it? Yeah. I thought you sold that card. I have it. I'm because, sorry to hear that. Because, like, look, I'm a Sixers fan, so I'm like, okay, it's Ben Simmons. I have a Sixers rookie card. I think they're going to win the finals this year. So I was in, I was banking on that, and then I and then I saw this playoff, and I'm like, oh my god, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. And I just happens sometimes. There's nothing. Oh, absolutely, you there take your nothing. you take your losses. That's okay. I didn't lose. I bought it for eighty dollars last yeah, year, so, so you, I, I'm still up. You're but already like, profiting. Sure, absolutely. I'll never complain about being in the green. But when I look at the at what fell, what is that? That's not me. Is that a vibrator? Oh, he's going to have to wait. Oh, I thought that was... I got shit to do. My fault. Oh, here. You know what? Here. So, let's jump to the next team in the conversation. How about that? Um, So, this is the one where I feel like this should be the favorite right here. The Wizards, plus 300. I feel like Bradley Beal wants out. I don't think they would do it. I think they would. would. Because what what else are they getting for, for Brad? I mean, what are they getting for him? I don't know if there's another team that could match the package that the Sixers could offer for Beal. Bro, Ben Simmons and Russell Westbrook would be horrible. Oh, you want to know something, Mike, though? <laughs> Together. Mike. Yeah, I agree. Mike, I agree. Russ, and I love Russell Westbrook. Mike, if they get Ben, Russ is out. That's that's the premonition here, and that's what I've heard, too. It's the same thing because they're, they're looking, they're looking long-term. They want Bro, someone to build around. If the Wizards get rid of Russell Westbrook and ba- Bradley Beal and bring in just Ben Simmons, they will not win 15 games. Absolutely not. They're not even going to score I mean, 100 points. Hey, look, I don't run the team. I'm just saying. going to score for them. I don't run the team. But if, if the relationship is that frayed and they can get Bradley Beal, the Sixers got to do it, number one. Number two, the Wizards have to look for somebody to build around long term, and they could identify Ben Simmons as that guy. Because essentially, if you're blind, Russ is at the end of his career. Um, he probably don't want to be there anymore either. So. I saw this Russ going the, to the Lakers. Yeah, I mean, I've seen all kinds of shit, and I'm I'm just saying I think they want to move on from Russ anyway, but they'll definitely do it if they can acquire somebody they can build around. So to me, I think that that's the most logical situation. How do you say though you can build around Ben Simmons? I, I mean, I know how, I understand how you guys feel, and I believe me, me watching this guy because I believe in this guy, it crushed me. But I'm just I'm being realistic. He's going to have value around the league circles. He's going to. It's a matter of how much and who's willing to pay the most. But in this situation, when you're dealing with a superstar who just can't possibly stay in Washington, um, you pull the trigger and both sides are happy. It's actually a good spot for Ben because there's not a lot of attention over there. You, you They're think, trash. He's I mean, trash. The, well, the problem. <laughs> <It's> perfect. The, <laughs> no, the problem is. He doesn't have his – his stock is so down. He doesn't – everybody thinks he doesn't we, care. This is what the public says. The NBA league circle, the guy made the all-star team this year with the stats that we're talking about. He That's had, awesome, he dude. He had around like 12 points. Uh, his average was 12 points when he was voted to the all-star team. That's, that's awful. That's, that's hype. But that's by – the coaches vote him in. He's so if you're reserves. a coach, if you're a coach and you just watch that performance, how do you look at him and say, you know what? I want to bring that guy. I want he him. could do it for me. Yeah, I'm going to take that guy who's going to shoot well, three times in seven look, games in a, in a playoff series. If you're bringing series. in okay. Ben Simmons as your number one guy, then you need to get checked. And I'm even saying that, but I'm just saying like he's still a star player in the league. He's not. He's not below. He's an all star at the minimum. Okay, he is. Huh? He is. Mike, you even said this. You even said this before. We were talking about who. Who's better than him? We were we were trying to go down like a list of twenty five players, and he was in our top twenty five just three weeks ago before this epic collapse. And that was all I needed and to you see. And you to said, slide him down. and you were with me on that too. We couldn't name twenty five players who were better. 
I mean, teams are looking for value too, especially the smaller market teams. They're thinking investment wise, like how, how can I acquire someone to build around if I don't have like, for instance, like, like I said, Washington's a team where they, they're a small market team. They have trouble luring in free agents. This is an opportunity for a team like that to buy in on someone while they're low. But I don't, and they might think, oh, I can fix them because the Sixers couldn't. They hired two fucking deadbeats in a row. No offense. And I, I want to dock here, but um, I'm just saying, like, two deadbeats in a row. I just, I don't know. They're looking at it from a value perspective, too. Like, the public's not looking at it that way. They're just like, Ben's got to go. Ben's got to go. Well, who are you getting in return? You have to get somebody who can actually play. You want to take him for Lonzo Ball right now? No, hell no. Lonzo Ball improved. Emphatically, no. Uh, I'm not taking him over. Hell you no. You guys are crazy. Uh, no, I think you're crazy. Lonzo, Lonzo improved. If he gonna, improved. If we're going to stoop to that level, you can get CJ McCollum. He's definitely better than Lonzo Ball. Agreed. I'm, 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 I'm out on CJ McCollum. But that's dude, my I don't point. Like him. Oh, I'm out on him too, but I yeah, think he's no. better than Lonzo. Lonzo's, Lonzo's younger. Think, well, Lonzo's got and some getting, upside. He's getting better. And Lonzo could D. The problem with him is... He was so hyped coming out. That's what I'm saying. That like he's not what he is. He's not. He's not as advertised. And I so get that. It's, nobody wants him. But if you compare, if, if again, if Lonzo Ball's on the Sixers, they win that series, without nah, a doubt. No, nah. bro. I he, I can't say that. No, nah, I How? can't. Say I don't know. I can't say. That's that a question to be. He shoots. Not he answered. shoots threes. He makes them. He can play defense. He's a good teammate. He's willing to improve. I like that about him. That's Look, cool. in, in all honesty, guys. And I'm, I was saying how I feel, but in all honesty, I think that Daryl Mo Morey will move on if he finds the right deal. I think that he is motivated to find the right deal, but he's not going to give him up for pennies. I agree. And I don't even think – I think he's going to start the season with the Sixers. And I'm okay and with that. And that's disappointing. I'm okay with it because I, I too, am not going to sell a 24-year-old all-star pennies on the dollar. So who do you I think, think that, that we can get for him, though, realistically? Like you think that I legitimately do believe the Wizards deal is possible because the relationship is just so frayed. I really do. You think they could get Ben Simmons for but, Bradley Beal? But Beale. they would have to give up because because Ben just failed, right? The Sixers are going to have to now you could have probably done a swap in the offseason. You could have probably done that. After this collapse, the Sixers are going to have to give up a pick and a player in addition because they hold no leverage. And you'll do it. And you'll do it. They don't have any leverage in trades. Not in not in that type of package. If you're going for a legitimate superstar, the, the almost scoring champion, then yeah, you got to pay up. Sure, absolutely. Dame, you got to pay up. Absolutely. Steph Curry, you got to pay up. And and I don't. I actually am now thinking he's probably staying with the Warriors. But yeah, he's I didn't even question. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But that was that was a little. That there was, was a little inkling there. A shoe deal. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> can't rule out anything in this NBA, you know. But. Um, for those type of players, you'll do what it takes. You'll give up the compensation, and you're not even going to think twice. I think the bottom line is you go out, you get somebody who can win you a championship, and that's the bottom line because at the end of the day, that's what you want to do. You want to maximize Embiid's potential. I hear you. You're going to tell me Embiid's going to walk away from the game not winning it. Not winning one I, ring. I that would be you. disappointing for me. I would be very oh, upset dude, because I've seen superstar. I'm seeing how dominant he is, he's and the best he, player in the league. He runs. KD. He runs KD's it. Probably. He runs it. He's he's dominant. Well, he has look, no if, weakness. Okay, they need he, to maximize his career. Here's the other angle. Here's the other angle, and I agree with you, Nick, hundred percent. The other angle is this: if Joel goes to Daryl Morey and says, "It's me or Ben," Ben's out. But I, 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 I don't think, think Embiid said I that. Think, I think Joel understands that uh, there's there's uh, something here. Uh, I, don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think Joel is in the same boat as, you know, pennies on the dollar. That's not going to fly because they're just really, like, you got to think of the alternatives. The alternatives aren't great, at least initially off of what we're hearing. The alternatives are not great. Some of these trade packages I'm seeing are just absolutely laughable. And that's not making us better. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens. Um, but we're going to have to revisit this very yeah. soon. Yo, real fast, real fast. Everybody go follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Subscribe, 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 please. You yeah. will enjoy this. <laughs> we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in today. But let's move on, guys. Let's, let's get in some uh, NFL talk.
Woo! Let's go. It's always NFL season. There's never an off season, right? It's the best. It never sleeps. It's the best. Yeah. That's my favorite by far. I mean, I love basketball the way it's trending, but man, there's nothing better than football. Nothing. Yeah. So football's around the corner, fellas. Training camp is July 27th. And it's going to be normal. Thank God. That's going to be, it's, that's a month away. We right? need yeah. this because, because wow. like me, like the Philly sports fan in me, I can't take another damn day of disappointment. And, and look, the Eagles will probably be <laughs> very up. disappointing. <laughs> Buckle up. But listen, I'm just saying I want to watch NFL football. Yeah. Of course, I'm going to tune into the Eagles, but like, give me something <laughs> besides. Can't wait to watch the Colts. The Sixers and Phillies right now. Just, just. This is another reason why I have to wear this. It's the last reminder of joy in Philadelphia sports. Probably the last right? Super Bowl that that organization will ever win. I'm actually, uh, <laughs> I'm just really excited to watch the rookie quarterbacks this year. Like, I feel like this class is like really intriguing, in in a, in a lot of ways. Like Trevor Lawrence, right? Him and, and it's a big story with him because of Urban Meyer and Tebow. Yeah. So you got um, you got Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance. Uh, Mac, Mac Jones. Jones, Kyle Trask. You want to throw him in there? Nah, nah, he's not going to touch the field. He had a Justin, pretty, Justin Fields. Not yet. Justin Fields. Maybe Brady's going to coach him, but I like we'll Fields. get to that. Yeah. I like Fields. Um, Justin Fields. I'm I'm looking forward to the rookies, uh, quarterbacks. I think they're really intriguing. Um, which which quarterback do you think out of that bunch is going to have the best season? It's tough because I don't know who's going to start. Like the 49ers, I don't know about Garoppolo. Like, what's is he going to get beat out? Is he going to start the season? How many games is he going to play if if he doesn't get injured? Mm -hmm. um, I think the I think Justin Fields is set up really really nice. I think it's kind of under the radar. Matt Nagy is an awesome head coach. He got Trubisky to the playoffs twice. Mm -hmm. He was twenty five and thirteen. With, he was twenty five and thirteen with Mitchell Trubisky. Which I like. I don't even think people realize that. No, <laughs> yeah. no, he gets a bad rap actually. Matt Nagy. He's and a he good coach. He is a good coach. He just needs a quarterback. He's another Andy Reid guy too, isn't he? He is. Yeah. They have a pretty good defense too. So I think Fields. I think he'll have the easiest opportunity because I'm. I'm. I mean, it's Andy Dalton. So I think Fields is going to have the best opportunity. I would probably roll with Fields this year. I really, I really do like Fields this year. And Mike, here's the Fields. reason why I would, I would feel inclined to back you up on this. The Bears front office and coaching staff, they're fighting for their for their lives right now. Their jobs are on the line. That's why they took I don't a quarterback. Know if Nagy is on the oh, line. Oh yeah. You think? He's he's on the hot seat. I thought there was a chance they'd get rid of him and it, it wouldn't have been fair. That would have been a mistake. But he's getting a lot of bad press. So their jobs are all on the line. All it wouldn't of them, surprise me if Fields is the starter week one. That's what I'm getting at. So the thing is, is like I mean, they they can't afford to lose games early in the season. Um, you might be pressing them into action too early, but this this particular staff is motivated to keep their jobs. They're probably best inclined. Like if you play the rookie, you get a little bit more of a leash, um, and also the reward could be great. If he balls out like he did at Ohio State, this team this team has <coughs> playoff potential, legitimate playoff potential. That's what I'm saying, man. I'm a, I'm so, a big Justin Fields guy. I like his setup a lot, and I see. Like, I see an opportunity there. Um, and he's under the radar. Yeah, he kind of is. slid in the draft. And I just feel like like the buzz is now Trey Lance. And even Mac Jones is getting more buzz than Justin Fields. Yeah, it's kind of weird because I don't think he's going to touch the field yet. Um, I think they'll take the time. I don't even time. think he's good. I don't know about that. I, I think that he, he definitely will be – like, he's he's – a pro ready quarterback but i just don't know how high he will ascend like is he going to be a middle of the ground guy or is he actually going to you know is he going to be able to win for you like i think they might be able to get by with him we, we're going to have to see more i mean they drafted him 15th but the, so the, he better be able to win it's not the best um setup for him but trey lance though like i really like the situation if he can win the job they, they might not start him in the first few games but the upside there if this kid gets on the field this year. The, the 49ers have a championship-ready roster. I think Trey Lance is going to have the best career Me too. of all the rookie quarterbacks. Me too. And I think it's because of Kyle Shanahan, and I think he's surrounded with the best pieces for future success. They got everything. Everything. Dude. They're, they're loaded. And now they have their quarterback on a rookie contract. 
And I exactly. think Garoppolo can go after this year. They might get rid of him this offseason. That's what I mean. Yeah. There's a chance. Yeah, they should. I mean, they gave up, what, three first-round picks to get Trey Lance? I think they're yeah. pretty sold on him at that point. I mean, if you give up your future like that, you have to be sold on him. Although the history shows when you do that, it don't work. If he shows enough flashes in training camp, he's got to start. He has to. Again, this is another team that that's playoff ready right now. But I like, I mean, Shanahan's ability to coach quarterbacks allows me to give me the confidence to believe in in him. I mean, that's that, what I'm saying. That's so I, I think he's going to do just fine. He's going to be awesome, man. Yeah. And and they could be a scary team this year if he could be what you know they think he is. Yeah. There's going to be some lumps, and and they probably, I mean, they'll be on the cusp maybe of a playoff berth, but next year. Look out if this kid's any good. Look out. Like, so, I, yeah, me, I think long term, that's probably my pick out of this quarterback group. I mean, I know, like, Trey? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not so particularly high on Trevor Lawrence. I think Neither that he's, I. he's good, but to say he's the second coming or like the next. I don't get it. You know, Andrew my issue, Luck. Like, he's, they're saying he's issue, the best prospects in Andrew Luck. I don't, number one, no. I don't say it. And number two, this is what I don't like about Trevor Lawrence. And I might just be weird for it. I don't feel like he loves football. And to me, that's like number one. Like, I, I don't feel like he like he just doesn't uh, like come off as a guy that loves the game. I, I see. I, I I don't know. I mean, I saw that quote that he said. Uh, it was about like he could walk away. It doesn't matter or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, it's like for me, what? like if you're a competitor, you um, want to go out there and compete every single time. Like you, you don't want to just say, I'm going to walk away from the game. I could walk away from it. I'm fine. I'm happy without it. I'm not going to read too much into that. I, I mean, I get it. Like no, that, I, that's a little concerning coming out of a rookie's mouth, but like, um, he just seems to shrink in big games to me. Like I just recently, he seemed the, the, the last couple years, like start of his college career, Kid was unstoppable. The, the the arc was just constantly going up. Last two years, though, he kind of shrunk in big games, and I don't have the stats in front of me, but he was he he was not what he should have been in those games. And this is college football, so like, you got to show up in those games, really. When you're on Clemson and you're you're the quarterback of Clemson, you got all those weapons. Are high. You oh, got I, the weapons, the offensive line, the run game, the defense, even like got to win and perform. That's well, what he's I'm trying in Jacksonville, like, so good luck. Like Clemson, kind of <laughs> yeah. They were saying like he's not used to losing, and he wow. never hasn't lost a game. Well, he and better I just, get used to I it. I just started Absolutely. laughing. I'm like, he better. He's gonna learn how to lose really fast. They'll be better. They'll be yeah. better. The Jags. Yeah, they'll win two games. <laughs> Maybe three. <laughs> I mean. I'm not about to jump on that bandwagon for sure. I'm not like one of those like, oh, Jags I mean, are winning six games. They got better, are you then. smoking? What? Did you see this roster? How many games did they win last year? One. Were they one of fifteen? No, no, no. They won two. I think they were two I, and fourteen. They might have won one. No, actually, they won the first because they game won of the, the first game against the lost. Colts of all teams. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Are you kidding me? That's still that was such an aberration. I couldn't believe it. Yep, one of fifteen last yep. year. They what? won they, week one and lost. Their like, oh wait, no, it was the wait. Jets that won a pointless game, and they said that they were pissed off because they wanted yeah. Trevor Lawrence. It was the Jets. I yeah. had them backwards. Look at this. It says streak L fifteen, guys. Crazy. They literally lost fifteen straight games last year. I didn't year. even realize that. They I didn't know they won their first Trevor. game. They tanked for Trevor, and they beat the Colts week one. And and Zach Wilson, for that matter, might have. A better long term than Trevor Lawrence. I like his setup a lot too. I we love didn't, we didn't talk about him, but I I kind of like him. I kind of like Zach Wilson. I just don't know about this year. But the Jets have been acing like everything lately. They I traded really back like up it. in the first round to get the offensive lineman. It was like, oh my god, they're competent. Thorough line, like everything. They're they're doing it right this time. They're surrounding the quarterback with the right pieces. They're still the Jets, though. They're still the Jets. I mean, I'm just judging what I see. I understand, but like, I really like what the Jets have been doing. They stood out to me as a I'm team. I'm the same thing. I don't think they're going to be terrible this year. No, I think they're going to be competitive. And when I say that, like, they're gonna they're gonna probably win like no more than four or five games. But like, they're not going to be consistent thirteen but they'll, or four. They'll be fourteen fighting. point dogs though. They'll be a team that that you have to scratch and claw against. They're going to be well coached. They're going to show up every Sunday, and uh, if Zach Wilson can play at all, they'll be in games. They got pieces now. They remind me of last year's Giants this year, I feel like, because, like, the Giants were tough. 
but they just yeah. weren't good. You, you want to know what they remind me of? You know what I'm saying? Like they <laughs> were just a tough team. Did the owner say they were like the best five and ten team of all time or something? <laughs> Did he say something crazy That's like that? I mean, Blue guys, statement. they were eight and eight the year before that. So like, they they weren't horrible. I mean, they were very poorly coached, and the the whole situation was just toxic. Adam Gase, I mean, everything about that guy is toxic. He's horrible. The whole thing was toxic. I can't. He got believe, two jobs too. I He's can't clueless. believe he wasn't fired before the season. He's they, horrible. Like they did everybody a disservice. They were obviously tanking in my book. Absolutely. But um, who you got winning uh, rookie of the year? Man, offensive rookie of the year. Yeah. And we're and we're just going. Uh, yeah. Okay. So overall, like all overall offensive, offensive rookie of the year, who you okay. got? Damn, I don't even. I don't even want to say it. You want the odds? I got mine. All right. You want me to tell you mine? Yeah. I got Devonte Smith. That's Ooh, who mine is. I really like it. I that's think. Who my, I, I honestly so think I. he's going to be like a legit superstar. That's why I didn't want to say it because, like, I, guys, like, I, I just, I'm so scared to say that. I but I, I'm, I think Devonte Smith is like, I actually think the Eagles did it. Like, I think they did it. But you know what's funny about it? But you know what's funny about it? I changed my pick because my original thought was Najee Harris. Me too. Like, I am like all in on him. He's good. Me he's too. going to be a problem. I don't think the Steelers are going to be that good though. Well, no, and that's something we're going to touch on. So yeah. hold that thought, Mike. But um, Najee Harris with that suspect offensive line, like it, it, it comes down to touches and touches result in production. So he's likely the favorite here. He was probably my original pick. Um, but here's the long shots, but not so long shots. Devontae Smith is definitely up there. I think he's going to have a massive workload. Who I think he's going to be the Eagles' first thousand-yard receiver. Yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent. I mean, I, who, I who knows how Jalen Hurts is going to be? Um, but this system should favor Devontae Smith production-wise. And also, I have to point this out: Kyle Pitts, guys, he's in a perfect situation to go off. Uh, first of all, he's impressing right now, not a surprise. But second of all, like he's filling Julio Jones's shoes. Matt Ryan is going to go to him early and often. That's going to be a one-two man show. Like that's Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts. Um, that's an offense that scores points. They yeah. they did they've done it without Julio Jones. Too. So I will give you this: now that they don't have Julio, they're going to have Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage on the outsides. So no, but well, the problem is he is, could is, be underneath. Is Atlanta's offense even geared towards tight ends really too much? I mean, they they signed uh, Hurst. They, they, and he wasn't really they like wanted much of an it to impact. work out, but Matt Ryan likes a good tight end. So Austin Hooper, a year before, uh, was producing at a very high level. He won Sheamus the fantasy league. He was very good. Matt Ryan will throw to the tight end if he's got one. Hayden Hurst, okay, he's not bad, but that's no Austin Hooper receiving wise. Kyle Pitts is a monster. Um. I don't think Jamar Chase is going to get enough production. I think he's actually going to play really well. Yeah, I'm so not. So process uh, of elimination, like, he's just not going to get the workload. So the only other thing that could possibly happen here, guys, is it's it's going to come down to whether or not one of these quarterbacks, like, elevates a team that much because they will get the most love in the voting. And is Nick Sirianni a good coach? I yeah. think he is. I like him. I'm just saying that's – Yeah. That I, is a legitimate question that and, you don't know. And for the record – he gets he gets talked about as a QB guy, but he's a receiver guy first. That's his whole career background. He's a wide receiver coach. Um, he played wide receiver. This is a guy who knows receivers, and and he's got a track record with, with receivers. Like him, so it really bodes well for Devontae Smith. I really like. I, I will probably place a wager on that. Let's just put it that way. Plus thirteen hundred. Whoo! Sign me up. Sign me up. I'm betting that. I'm I'll throw like down him. twenty on that. Yeah. I'm gonna I mean if it happens, I'm making I'm making a nice chunk right there. I like him. I think he's getting double digit touchdowns this year. I think he's gonna have probably over seventy five catches. I, I think he's gonna be like a legit number one. And it's not even just so situation. He's just, just good. Weird saying I'm excited about it. He's he's good, guys. Yeah, I mean this I'm could really be Marvin Harrison two point That's the comp, and he actually looks same body type, same type of game. Like Marvin Harrison was my favorite, dude. I got his jersey. It's right? funny. It's funny. I love like, Marvin Harrison, dude. You know what's funny? I changed my pick because I saw the news today that David DeCastro got released by the Steelers, and their offensive line is Whew. shambles. Dude, that's, I can't I, believe what they did this offseason. I don't think Pouncey that. retired. Villanueva went to the Ravens, and then now DeCastro, a nine-time Pro Bowler, just got released. I mean— I don't think the Steelers make the playoffs this year. Well, here's my that thing. That was my next question, Mike. 
Well, no. Here's my thing my with question. the Steelers. What direction are they going in? I, they're all over are the place. Are they rebuilding or are they yeah. like yeah, trying to win? What are they holding on the bench so for? It's so confusing. Like, like they say, oh, let's go for it one more time. And you're going to walk into this season with this offensive line? This is garbage. With Big Ben's Do you like, see what they injury have? history? And, and look, they just signed Trey Turner, but they should have signed him on top of keeping DeCastro. They're, dude. They're, this is a mess, guys. Like, they're they just, in trouble, dude. They just drafted two offensive skill position players, who I like, by the way. Okay, they got the Penn State tight end, uh, Freer Muth or whatever, however you pronounce it, and Najee Harris, who I really like. But if you're going to go and do that, how do you not sign – Anybody on the free agent market, and they just signed Trey Turner. But look, like he he's he's still out there in free agency right now. Obviously, there's a reason his play has dipped. He's been hurt. Okay, like what are they doing? What are they doing? They have a great defense. Like it's all over the place. You're going it's, for it, it. Looks like panic moves. They said they're going for it. And this is a front office that's on cruise control always in the First draft. Of all, everything. You're not going for shit with Juju as your number one. No. No. I can't. He is my most hated wide receiver. He's in the not NFL. their number one, though, Mike. He's not. No, no, he no. Might no get I'm not, made like it. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm in total agreement. Claypool. Yeah, I like Claypool, Beast. and I like Deontay Johnson too. But he's got to work on the drops. And that's he's got to work. Steelers. It's like it's confusing because they have like a young nucleus of you know weapons. They got Claypool. They just drafted last year. He had a great rookie year. Awesome. And then they just you know they have Harris. They signed Juju to one year. He's kind of young i don't feel like they have a locker room leader though but the problem no, is ben ben's the on. guy who goes in the off season and drinks beer nick sorry go ahead hold on but my problem is i don't know what direction they're going in because if if you have these young players and then you're getting rid of your offensive line like pro bowl players how are you going to protect your your quarterback who's pretty much on his last year of ret on retirement you're right he's, on He's it, retiring. Nick. He's retiring. He's on his last beer belly. I, I can't believe they brought him back. I was shocked the Steelers even signed him. I was, why? You want to know why? No other alternatives. But if you know that Ben's your quarterback for they got one young more Simba. season and you're going for it, that's what they're doing. When you when you keep Ben, you're going for it. They're going for fourth place. It's going to look I don't know really, what the hell they were thinking this whole offseason. I'm stunned. It's going to look ugly for Ben. and uh, It's a bad way to go out. Yeah, I, I agree. And it sucks because Ben's, you know. I love Ben. He's a, he's a legend. Let's yeah, call he is. is. He is. He had a great career. Yeah. And, I, and just, I actually think he's on. He's underrated. Hall of Famer. Yeah, I, I, just, I just feel Hall like. Hall of Famer. Unquestionable. Yeah. Hall I of just, Famer. I just feel like I don't want to see somebody go out like that. And I just have a gut feeling that's going to happen. And. It's just not going to end and well. How's he staying healthy? Yeah, they he's got, not going to. Dwayne Haskins is going to be playing this year. Young Simba, <sighs> totally agree. I have a really, really interesting. Oh my question for you guys. Shoot it. Oh Let's go. God. Brady. Okay. <laughs> says, you chose that motherfucker over me in the preview of the the newest episode episode yeah, of showed <laughs> episode of the shop. Now, who do you think he was talking about? You want to start this one? Let's talk about <coughs> it. <laughs> yeah, for real. Let's talk about it. You want to start this one, or you want me to? You take it, Mike. You you take it. So, I'll, I'll I'll follow up. All right. I think it was the Titans. I liked it. I, the reason I say it's the uh, the Titans is because I feel like he lost his last game to Ryan Tannehill. Um, I just like to me, I don't think he would disrespect Garoppolo like that. I don't think he wanted to go to the Raiders. So, like, I don't feel like he would really do that. Herbert was good, so I don't feel like, really feel like he would disrespect him like that. So, to me, it's just that team makes the most sense. And, like, it's just, like, my reaction would be the same, too, for Ryan Tannehill. Like, you chose him over me. I would have the same exact reaction. And, like, the way I think Brady's wired, I could see Brady taking it personal. That that was the last game that he lost. And then, like, now you wanted him, and now you pull out. Pull out. Uh -oh. <laughs> don't do that. Good for you. <laughs> How about you? What do you think? I've been going back and forth about this. Um, Titans, that's a really good pick because that's a ready-made playoff roster. That's his guy in Vrabel. Imagine if they had him and then got Julio. <sighs> Yo. Oh and Nick likes Ferkser. Love him. He's a beast. <laughs> Keep sleeping on him. You know, they keep sleeping on him. He's a pretty good player. Watch, watch this season. All right, he's uh, he's going to ball out. Okay. Because all the attention's on the the wide receivers. He's going to sneak right in the seam. Okay. 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 But that that would have been a situation where you could see Brady thriving. So I like that. Um, I recently heard it was what Colin Cowherd said. The Bears 
Yeah, which the, I actually thought was interesting, uh -huh. to be honest, because I could get that too. But like, I don't know. He don't. Well, I couldn't imagine him going to the Bears, playing in that cold and shit. I don't think he cares. He loves the cold. You know that. Well, no, he said he's not. He'll never go back to the cold now. He lives I mean, in I, Tampa. I get it. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a Florida boy. But listen, yeah. listen, listen. From Florida sorry. with love. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> Can't blame him, guys. Like it would be amazing to live there. But like, let's unwrap the Bears real quick. Playoff ready roster as well. That's a better defense than the Titans. They have a legit number one wide receiver and probably legit number two in Mooney. Right, so you got Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney. Darnell Mooney is good. Uh -huh. He's good, and and also Anthony Miller is good too. He would have been that nice slot guy for Brady. You know he loves a slot guy. Um, David Montgomery turned out to be pretty decent this year. The offensive line was shit, but I imagine they would have improved that. Um, but to me, the, what I was thinking of, it's like the one guy. See this jersey I'm wearing, guys. Look, see right here. <laughs> this guy for some reason, just gets under Tom Brady's skin still. And he admitted it last year in that golf outing. Remember, Peyton Manning uttered some joke about Nick Foles, and he was pissed. That's he was the like, belt. He was like, yeah, how could you do that to me on TV, let alone, you know? There's something about Nick Foles that just pisses him off to no end. It's like, Imagine that's a championship. He, he should have won because... He was going off in that game, and he lost to Nick Foles. Imagine being was the best quarterback form. that ever lived and so, losing to a backup. So it makes sense to me. It's like, Keep going. you chose that motherfucker <laughs> over me? You chose Nick Foles over me? Like, I'm the GOAT, and you chose him over me? He beat, I mean, but he did beat him in that game. He did. He outperformed Tom Brady in that game. I mean. Debatable. No, he did. I mean. The guy and he won the game, too. Sure. He won. I mean, the guy threw 500 yards and took an L. That's he had to. They were hey. playing from behind. Yeah. Well, regardless, it doesn't even matter. But like the Bears, I'm happy make... for Foles. I mean, yeah. Foles. I that was Foles. awesome. Yeah, I love him. I'm happy for him. He's Yo, a great yeah. guy too. He's... How can you not? Hell him? yeah. Right. It's just Brady's Brady. Like yeah. I love Brady. But like it makes sense though. The Bears make sense when you think about it that way. It's like this hate that he has for Nick Foles. He can't even shake the guy's hand, which. I'll never understand. But All right, so by my sense, you got. I understand that. So then the other thing is this: 49ers. I don't know. Like they share agents. Yeah, I was Jimmy just G. Say, yeah. But didn't Tom Brady grow up a 49er fan? Yeah. Pretty sure he did. But I don't think that them sharing agents. I think that would be bad for business. It would be bad for business. But that was that's a championship roster. I'm not going to discount the 49ers. I'll say I'll say the Bears just to be different than you. But don't count out the 49ers either. Nick, who do you have? Give us give go. us your thought here. Here we go. I want to hear this. Because you know the guy. This, this is your boy right here. You know better than anybody. You know what team it was? Who? The Raiders. <laughs> the Las Vegas Raiders. It was 100% the Raiders. You're a Raider. It was the Raiders. During the offseason, there was reports about Vegas being in the hunt for Brady. And Brady actually was willing to actually go there, apparently. I don't even know why he would go there, though. Business. TB12 business. That's exactly what it was. He was, looking to go, <laughs> he was looking to go to a big city where he could promote his business. Let's, let's face it. He's on the back end of his career. He's looking to promote his business. The TB12 sports. Well, debatable. I mean, he just won a Super Bowl. So. I think he's Whatever. definitely trying to promote. I agree with you there, Nick. I mean, 43 years old, won a seven Super Bowl. Yeah, I and mean, it's Oakland. Not, Oakland, you know, California, no, not no. not bad. Place no, it's not. Live. It's not. Warm it's actually, weather. It's Las Vegas. Oh sheesh! I said Oakland again. See, everyone keeps doing that. It's Vegas. It's Vegas. Oh, even better. That's great what I'm weather. Um, I mean, yeah, best for business, no question about it. Absolutely. You guys see, you guys see the Golden Knights games. I mean, look at this. It was absolutely. Oh my god! The Raiders. You see that stadium? It was the Raiders wow. because Ooh. David Carr is not the answer for them, and I think he looks at that roster. He's like, wow. You mean Derek? Derek, Derek Carr, Jesus. David, Derek, they're, I mean, they're, they're, the both, they're both trash. It doesn't even matter. That's why that, That's why I'm thinking, like, Brady's like, you chose that motherfucker over me. Like, you guys bowed out of the sweepstakes for me for, for Derek Carr. I don't think he would have won with the Raiders, though. Maybe well, not. At but, the but time, I think it's possible. Go ahead, Nick. But hold Go on. Ahead. So I'm looking at, like, their nucleus. You got Josh Jacobs, right? They got yep. rugs. They got some stars on that, on that team. Waller. You don't think Brady would love throwing the wall? Well, and this is before they got rid of their whole offensive line. 
Absolutely. All they would have needed was defense. The defense was trash. And that's why it was intriguing for him. But John Gruden, though, you know. I mean, John Gruden was probably like, oh, I'd love to get Tom Brady in here, man. <laughs> you know? You probably you do that better than me. The Ryan Tanny, you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would, like, yeah. Like, I'm going to go with the Raiders just because I, I think it's just business. It's a good sleeper pick. I think it's business. And and if I, if I match the timelines up, they were in the sweepstakes for Brady. At Do you the time. think that he that the team gets revealed on the shop tomorrow night? I certainly hope so, but I I doubt it. Maybe he'll wait till he retires, but I can't wait to hear who it was. I, I can't wanna, wait. It's going to leak. However, they motivated him to do what he however, just did. However, I will say this: Brady's a different different dude now. Like in New he's England, not a robot. In New England, yeah, he was like, a, he was robotic. Now he went to go to he, he went to Tampa and he's free. He talks his I shit. Love him he now. talks his shit. He's got swagger. Yeah. He's talking shit on the on on the internet. He's saying whatever he wants. He's free. Full and he's having fun on Twitter hey. too. Oh yeah, hey, he hey. really does. Big troll on Twitter. Hey, former <laughs> hater here. Like, I respect the hell out of man, but I couldn't stand seeing him succeed. But now I I love this Tom Brady. I love this guy. I enjoyed watching him win this year. Like, when I watched the Super Bowl, and yeah, like, the Tampa Bay defense, shout out Tom Bo uh, Todd Bowles and Bruce Arians with the excellent game plan on the offensive side. But, like, when I watched that game, first thought was, damn, Brady's on cruise control. Like, this looked, this looked easy. This was, like, just the – he makes it look so easy. I was saying that I was rooting for, for the Bucks as I was watching the game. I didn't think I would. Because I was like, man, like I bet the Chiefs in the game, and I was like, oh, I, I kind of want them to win, guys. It was just, it was just like so impressive. I was, I enjoyed watching him succeed, and I love his personality right now. Like I love awesome. hearing a little bit more. Him on the he's jet. He's chiming in on Twitter, oh, not on like the jet on the the yacht. It's great. Yeah, on the jet. This is yeah. this is great, guys. He's good for business like this. I fucking hate you. He's good for business. <laughs> <laughs> he's throwing the Super Bowl trophy. Like, like I yeah, love like, that. That's crazy, dude. He looked like a frat boy. I loved it. He, he, like he couldn't kid. even walk. He earned that though. He was he so drunk. earned that. He was so drunk. He was getting escorted by what? It was a teammate or a coach. It was, Avocado it was and vodka. I'm I interested. I'm I'm intrigued to see if they reveal it. And they will. Yeah. So at some point they will. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, but at some point a report's going to come out. out. 100%. I hope so. Whether it's fabricated or I'm not, I'm waiting I don't for it. Care. I can't, I can't yeah. wait. I know. I really Man, hope I when I watch that tomorrow night. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Um, let's get into uh, some MLB news. Yeah, we're going to touch on that real quick. What do you guys think of this whole spider tax situation going on in the MLB? <laughs> it, Have you seen weird. the last two days? Like, Yeah, like, like it's annoying now. Okay, the umpires are going to the mound. Like, Joe Girardi, for example, okay, you're watching the Phillies-Nats game, Scherzer's on the mound, and Joe Girardi requests that the umps check him for, for foreign substances, right? <laughs> this guy legit was stripping on, on TV. That like, was hilarious, like, dude. I love it, though. Make a mockery of it. This is like, <laughs> oh, it was great. I loved it. Then Scherzer going like this and just standing there like this. And it's with his glove it's and so stuff. embarrassing for the sport. This dude, they're checking their hair. You got people complaining oh, yeah. that the MLB yeah. games are already slow enough. And now in between innings, you want to pat people down for sticky shit on their hats. Awful look for the sport, by the way. And Awful. If they want to change it, wait till the end of the year. I can't wait to hear what he or has enforce to say. It, whatever. This is a disgrace, guys. This is so bad for the game. I know. This actually will be a good topic to get him on there. Shout out E. So bad. Shout out Shout E. Shout out E. He's the, the uh, baseball guru for sure. And he'll be on here. You'll That's see, That's the skipper guys. right there. Yeah. You, you Shout out to the wait. skipper. You wait till the, the postseason run. You he'll be on here wait. with his coconut oil. <laughs> yeah, <it's coconut laughs> Shout out Kid Kapler. <laughs> Yo, yeah. speak, speaking of E, he actually bought me this jersey for my birthday. Really? And Shout out what? E. And guess what? It's my birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, uh, Shout out, Nick. Nick. Happy sure. birthday. Thank That's you, our fellas. brother. Thank you, fellas. Right? I'm 29, so the audience, you know my age. You had to, uh, you had to no jump shame. to it, Nick. No shame. I was going to give you a shout out at the end of the show. So was I. You ruined you, it. You killed my buzz. <sighs> Damn. You can do whatever you want, brother. It's your birthday. Oh, I happy appreciate birthday. that. Thank you so happy much. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, put on Ratchet Happy Birthday. <laughs> it's your fucking birthday. <laughs> 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 the worst song. <laughs> <laughs> that song is fire. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think it's a disgrace for the sport. Uh, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. I find it embarrassing. I feel like 
it's it's losing a lot of juice, you know? I mean, nobody wants to watch that. And I I personally, I didn't even know this, these pitchers were doing that. Neither did I. So now that I'm knowing, I'm I like... I had no idea. And then I was reading well, about it on Twitter, and I'm like, wait, this is actually happening? This is because the and MLB keeps up. changing. Like, they change the baseball every year. They're, like, trying to reduce home runs and stuff. Like, yeah. They're what just are getting... you doing? Everyone wants to watch that shit. It's awful. Yeah. I would love to see steroid era again. I mean, I don't, I don't endorse steroids, but like that time was baseball was fucking lit, guys. I it loved was exciting. it. It like what happened? The game, like, listen, I love baseball still, but the baseball purists, like, besides them, the casual viewers are losing interest. I have. I love baseball overall. But, I've lost interest. I just like it's just there's nothing like really. Exciting. I'm a different breed, but. Like it definitely like even me I'm I'm like kind of like man the NBA playoffs are on right now I'm not watching the Phillies because they fucking blow yeah um oh yeah they're another but if if I have to discussion for later oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll touch on that real quick before the end of the show but um I mean if I have to see another guy take off his damn belt on TV like literally Shohei Otani had to take off his belt on the mound yesterday. Are you kidding me? Dude, like, that's why I there's love There's kids what, watching. I love what the... You might as well just show his bare ass. Right? I love what the pitchers are doing, though, making a mockery of it. They should. Taking and their I, pants down, throwing their arms... I love that. Keep doing it. Make a mockery of it, because it's ridiculous, and I was waiting to see what Trevor Bauer would do. I didn't get to see the game last night, but I, I assure you he did something last Imagine night. Imagine a hothead like Bryce Harper on the pitcher's mound, and they got to check him after every inning. Oh. He would lose his mind. Yeah, they were making a joke. Actually, the Nationals bench yesterday. They were like, "Check Harper's hair. Oh yeah, check it's his hair. Really? Like, That's awesome. He's got that product in his hair. It was hilarious. It's like, it's, yeah, this is this is getting better by the second. Harper's laughing. Like everybody's like, you know, that's crazy. They're get, they're really like the MLB. They're reaching. They really need to listen to their players. The players were even getting on them. These players want the game to be better. So come on, guys. Like come on. This is ridiculous. Agreed. I just didn't know that they were cheating the entire time. And if I would have knew that, then maybe I would look at the sport differently and maybe I would accept it. I mean, because everybody's doing it. But now, now that I know that it, they've been cheating for a little while and the MLB wants to crack down on it. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. But I feel like the MLB definitely knew about this. Oh, yeah, they did. Let's they call, did. I think it was like frowned upon. They were turning a blind eye to it earlier in the season. Well, sure, because it was getting a lot of production out of the players. You'd be, you know, it was more exciting. Like this is the thing: is if if they would stop changing the damn game every off season, like with the baseball, you juicing the ball, the bats, like if if you would change, if you would stop changing the game, players won't be looking for these unfair advantages. Seriously, that's why the pitchers did this. That is exactly why they did it this year. It's a different baseball, guys. It's a different grip for the pitchers, like. There's there's been more injuries because of this baseball. Like I got what? injuries. Ch yeah. Tyler Glass now he he blamed he literally <laughs> blamed the new baseball for his Tommy John in his arm. I got injuries. <laughs> got tired legs, dude. <laughs> tired legs. But we should we should actually we should move on. Front runner for the AL and NL MVP race. Who do you guys got? Let's go AL first. Nick, who do you got? <sighs> AL MVP right now and in the future. I'm I'm torn. It's funny. I'm torn between Otani and Trout, and they're on the same team. So you're, it's weird. You'll even like give, they're both balling, but like I, if I had to give it to somebody, I'm gonna give it to Otani because he's, crazy, he's been dude. absolutely <sighs> like filthy. Like he's a free. He hits bombs. Yeah, and he could pitch really really well. That's so we were just talking about that value. before the show. I we mean, were just talking about it before the yeah. show. And most valuable player, I I'll, I'll go Otani. It's a shame the Angels blow. Like they're they're worse. They they are wasting Mike Trout's prime. He might be he might go down as the best baseball player to ever play the game. And they are wasting it. And by the way, I don't know. I mean, Mike Trout was probably my favorite prior to getting hurt. Right now it's got to be Otani for me. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that pick. I'm gonna go with Otani because he he's just he's playing every day and he's he's getting on the mound. He's got he's got like a two two point seven ERA right now. And I, I expect it to drop a little bit, but I mean two point seven ERA, like twelve to thirteen K per nine. Like this guy's this guy's nasty as a pitcher. I and know. then he's going out the very next day and he's slugging the ball. Like he's he's among the leaders in home runs. He actually might be the the leader in the AL right now. I think he's in the 20s now. I think he might be at 23. 
Um, I'd have to double check that. He and Vlad are going neck and neck. But um, that, I mean, that's just crazy. That's crazy. It's unheard of. Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. I didn't give you my NL MVP pick. Give me your NL MVP. Who is it right now, and who will it be at the end of the season? Right now, it's it's going to surprise a lot of people, actually. Oh, let me I'm, hear it. I'm one of those guys that I'm looking at right now, right? Yeah. Not – okay. Nick Castellanos. Ooh, yeah. He's starting to get some buzz. I think, like, he's really, really sneaky. Like, right now, like, he's balling. Right, he's got 13 homers, um, at 268 at bats, 91 hits. He's batting 340 with 13 homers, uh, 38 RBIs. Uh, he's he's balling. I, I'm I'm a fan. So and his and his name is Nick. So of course I'm gonna go with with that guy. But at the end, I I think Tatis takes it because like I think he's really really good for the sport because he brings that juice that yep. energy that that promotion <clears throat> I was gonna to say the, the game. same exact thing so I think I, I'll go with Tatis and I'll go with Otani I'm, I'm you, the same yeah you, Tatis same. and Otani for I mean the same reason because you were feeling really you were feeling before. Acuna right yeah but like Beast. when we were talking about before that like I I understood what you were saying like right now you would probably say Acuna but then Overall, in the long term, it's probably going to be Tatis. Because, like, they've been neck and neck. Acuna, Tatis. Um, I would say right now it's got to be Acuna. But um, my end of season pick is Tatis, and here's why. I can guarantee you they're getting the playoffs. The Braves, I don't know what the hell's happening. I expect them to probably at least snag a wild card at this point. They were my division pick. Tatis is only 22. Yeah. And he was he, born in 1999. And, and he's and he I mean you got to give credit like the team will be a playoff team and that's the only thing that's against Otani but like he's doing something that's never been seen before something that Babe Ruth was doing a long time ago pitching for the Red Sox and you know like the, we don't see this right so that's a different scenario okay but like usually getting into the playoffs in baseball that does count for something that actually might have cost Mike Trout a couple more MVPs and it's kind of unfair because he, he should have yeah. another two on his resume. He, he got him stolen, literally. But, Nick, to your point, Cassianos, here's the reason why I think he won't get it. His teammate, Jesse Winker, is right there with him. Yeah. And, and they're, they're – I mean, Cassianos, for that matter, though, like if there was a, you know, most improved, damn, like what a turn he took with his career. Like he, he always was a highly regarded prospect. To do what he's doing now I think was extremely unexpected – Give him credit. Like, that's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And this is a guy who couldn't even find a position because he, he was so bad in the field. And he's, he's figuring it out at the plate. It, like, you don't care at this point because I, he's he's hitting the hell out of the ball. You don't care. He's batting 340. That's it's ridiculous. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And 268 at-bats, that's a pretty significant amount. That's a big sample size. Yeah, I agreed. That's a, you're a good hitter. Yeah. Um. So that that's my guy right now. I like it. Uh, but Tatis, for me, he's he just brings so much joy to the game. He's fun to watch. Oh, yeah. And he, baseball needs and that. And baseball needs that, especially with the cheating shit going on. Like, yeah. they definitely need something to be the front face of the sport. He's must-see TV. And he's absolutely. Electrifying. Like, absolutely. he makes the game exciting. Otani, same thing. It's like, yeah, he's on the West Coast. Uh, it's hard to watch his game sometimes, but, like, how can you not pay attention to what's going on right now? This is this you know what is reminds historical. me of. Do not blow this out of proportion. You know what reminds me of when I was younger and I used to my favorite athlete was Derek Jeter, and I just loved to turn on the TV and watch him play. Like he just yeah. looked like he was so full of joy playing a game that he loves. Loves the game. Plays so it's like hard those are things play. that those are things that are appealing to me. Where it's just like like we were talking earlier with Trey Young. Like he just looks like he's having fun yeah. playing mm -hmm. a game, and that's what it's about. That's like. That reminds me of like Jimmy Rollins or Chase Utley. Yeah, like, I Chase love Utley, love those oh, players yeah, because they Chase Utley would hit a ball to third base and run as fast as he could to first base. Favorite yeah. player of all time for me, Chase Utley. Chase. Love you, absolutely. He he deserved he deserved another ring or two, and he should have been MVP probably twice, and he should probably get in the Hall of Fame. I he's mean, a Hall of Famer. Name dude. name a to better. Me. Yeah, yeah, he's in Nick's Hall of Fame. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be close, guys. <laughs> he's in Mike's Hall of Fame too. <laughs> oh yeah, he's first ballot here, first ballot. But like, it's gonna be a fringe case because of the injuries, and uh, he did manage to lengthen his career a couple seasons. But 
prime, like second baseman prime. Find me a better prime for a second baseman. That guy was arguably the best player in baseball for a solid five year stretch. He was right there, top oh. top three, top five players. Chase Utley. Oh yeah, yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. greatest runs you'll see. So if it's about like the best player of the generation. How does he not get included? I know. But that's a subject for another day. He had a short, compact swing, and it was oh, beautiful. Best, best swing. I love Dude, it was like swing. a half swing. Yeah. I love his walk-up music. I love his swing, his swag. It was, uh, he walked his... up to Cashmere, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Love it. Yeah. It was like he was the playing Led like Zeppelin half ball. Man. Yeah. You ever play half ball? You just smack it. Yeah. But. <laughs> that, yeah. He just gets you, you just, fired up. You got to smack it up in rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said that, I'm like, fuck. Yeah, but this is perfect. To it's get, a must. This is a perfect segue. Phillies, we have to touch on them real quick. Let's do it. Same old, same old. Joe Girardi, guys, what the hell is going on? Is I had he such drunk? High, dude, I had such high hopes for him. I I'm did like, too. He's coached before. He knows I, what he's doing. He's been from. He's from the Yankees, winning organization, World he'll, Series champ. He'll write the ship, and it's just same old. I gotta say, and I and E and I talked about this. Is he is he like drunk or something? What the hell is he doing right now? He's he's managing so poorly. He's lost us some games. Yeah. So my question for you guys, given the Phillies' recent slide, and they're losing games they should be winning. Like yesterday's loss or two days ago at this point, the 13-12 loss, they at three different points in the game, two different times, they were like above 95% uh chance of winning the game. And then they were above 89% another time. And they they literally blew all three of those leads. And they lost the game. Regular. And they blew three. Real shit. <laughs> it's regular. It's, regular. Dude, it's the same story it with them, It feels like last year. What They'd changed? They would have been better off with Gabe Kapler. Oh, I, I'm right there with you. I was a Kapler fan. But listen, I like Joe Girardi. I, I have to ask you guys, though. Does he deserve to be fired right now? Would you would you shake it up and see if the I Phillies? I feel like if you fire you know, him right now, it's a panic move. It looks like a panic move. Well, Nick? if they fire him, who are they going to replace? Yeah, like who him is with? it? We're going to call right. Charlie Manuel again. <laughs> and I, feel I would like, take him honestly right now. But I feel like you know. So you know what's funny about all this is I feel like Harper has a lot of say. He should. Ex- absolutely. I mean, you're going to pay somebody $300 million. You respect his decisions, right? Yeah. You have to. I feel bad, you trust I feel bad for him. You trust somebody. If you give somebody $300 million, you trust them. That's the bottom line, right? So I feel like it's going to really depend on his relationship with uh, Girardi. Do I feel like he should be fired? I said it last year. Everybody called me crazy. Oh. Shit, at least you calling. Facts, right? <laughs> so, so, like, I said last year because my thing was, Half the league made the playoffs in, in, in last year's season, COVID season, right? If you're a big market team like Philadelphia, you don't miss the playoffs. Especially right? that, Excuse that, however, that. however, the pitching was absolute dog shit. But, like, if you got somebody who's $300 million is on your roster, you have to make the playoffs. At least make the playoffs. I'm not saying win a World Series. It's hard in baseball because one player can't, like, I feel like one player can't do all that. Like right. You don't have a so, bullpen and you don't have pitchers. You just I totally agree. To your point there, Mike, what a waste of this exceptional offense. Exceptional. It's this crazy. team, this team can put up runs like no other, especially when they're hot. I mean, do they have to score ten plus runs a game to win at this point? This is this is laughable. This is laughable. They said, hey, we're gonna go out and improve the bullpen this offseason. They go out and grab a couple names. Those guys are pitching well, actually. A couple of them. Archie Bradley, um, Jose Alvarado, probably the two best arms of the bullpen. But they're not in the most crucial role. Closer, setup man, okay? They're they're getting thrown in like sixth, seventh inning for high leverage situations. And the reason is because the back end of the starting rotation is also still laughable. They're trash. You can't, like, look, like Vince Velasquez, Spencer Howard, I get it. Like, you, oh, we can get four solid solid innings from them, but once you hit the third the, uh, the third round of the, ro- uh, the batting lineup, once you hit them the third time around, these guys are getting lit up. Oh, we don't want to burn out Spencer Howard's arm. Oh, we, we don't want to get... Vince Velasquez, Velasquez exposed. Bro, when I'm are so we going to see? I'm so like, tired of hearing that. Oh, I don't want to burn out his arm. If you don't throw him out there to let him pitch through it, we're never going to know if he can do it. It's crazy. Dude, it's 
this is what I'm saying. It's though, time baseball. to move on. Baseball has gotten I, so analytical. Yeah, I can't believe Everything the last play is, is, is still on our roster. But this is because he this stinks. Is because, yeah, <laughs> he well, stinks. That our form one, system is listen, trash. He's so trash. Always. I can't. Hey, I can't watch him. Dave pitch. Dombrowski was brought in here because he's a winner who goes for it. He goes for it all right now. He'll trade prospects to win now. I that's what he does, like, right? I thought that was good. But that's what he does, right? Yeah. I thought it was good too. So his response is. Hey, let's get Chase Anderson and Matt Moore, and we're gonna pay them what? It was like, uh, I'm gonna guess it was between ten to fifteen mil combined for both of them. You know what I'd rather do? Instead of getting those wash ups, okay, get me one legitimate good arm, and then yep. promote somebody from within at that point. Or you go at least at least if you're gonna have one bad starter, it'll be the fifth guy, and I could take it there. I, like that's fine. You know what? I'll take the L that day. Occasionally we'll win it with the bullpen, and occasionally Velasquez is going to go six innings. I can deal with that, but two two holes in the rotation, you're you're wasting Zach Wheeler. He literally, if Degrom didn't exist, that's your Cy Young winner today. And we're still only one game out of second place. It's crazy. Well, here's the thing. So going back to the original question, if should we fire Girardi? No, not yet. After it would be season. a panic move. It would be a panic sure, move. Sure, because we're only down five games out of first place in our division. So let them finish out the season. See, see, see what happens. Get to the two wild card. Wild, see what happens. Two wild cards. So. See what happens. You never know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's yeah. see if he can get himself into a wild card. You just never know, then right? it's anyone's so, game. My, right. my pick, same thing, Nick. If they don't make the playoffs, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to consider a move. I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be in consideration. It would just be... If we don't make the playoffs, the very Something's next day on change. the off season, yeah. I'm calling Joe up. He's coming to my office, and we're just gonna have to part ways. And that's, yep. just, that's just the bottom line. If I'm, if that's me, but right there with you. We got one, we got one last thing here today, guys. Real quick, uh, we're not gonna go too deep into this, but NHL playoffs. Holy shit! Like the NHL playoffs are drunk. Like it's it's like we're seeing a Hawks type of run in the NBA with. The Montreal Canadiens literally lost twenty, almost like twenty plus more games than the Golden Knights this year, and they have a three-two series lead. And then we're also looking at it's two-two right now, two-two in the game. So and they're at home. Yeah. So Canadiens win. They're they're moving to the Stanley Cup. They're beating probably the odds-on favorite to win it right now. I told you guys I have the Lightning repeating after after the Avs were bounced. Mm -hmm. And the Lightning are going to Game Seven with the Isles. Like this, this could be an Isles versus Canadians Stanley Cup Final. This is crazy, and we're seeing some parity here too. You gotta love it. Parity. You gotta love it. I enjoy sports with parity. It's the best. I'm kind of rooting for when it. When it's to unpredictable, be it's the best. So much more fun to watch and enjoyable. You, you you just become a fan. You know, you become more of a fan of the sport. It just becomes more enjoyable to watch and just I don't know. I'm I. Like you said, Mike, it could be Islanders and Canadians. I had uh, Tampa Bay and the Knights in the Me too. in the cup, and I had the Knights winning it in six. Uh, my prediction is looking pretty shitty right now, but uh, I had Tampa winning in six. But you never know. So it's two two right now in the, in it's the third two, period. Two. Yeah, the Knights just scored to tie it up <sighs> at two two. It was uh, it was two one. Just to get to this point, though, wow! Like what a credit to those guys. The Flyers should be watching right now. That's a team that they just beat. The Flyers last, are regular too. Last year's Always playoffs. Something. Last year's playoffs, they just beat yeah. this team. Big but garbage. anyway, guys, we'll we'll touch on this again at some point. Um, yeah. Real quick, guys, shout out again to our boy Nick. Happy birthday, Nick! This is our guy right here. Happy birthday, Nick! Thank you guys so much. I, I love you. It. Me and Nick been best friends since fourth grade. He got me involved in this. Uh, it was a little bit of a tug of war. But as you can see, I gave in. Um, I love you. <laughs> Again, thank you so much. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing this, and I uh, look forward to what the future has in store for us, guys. Another shout-out for my boy, Michael William. He's nine months old today. A shout-out to Mike's boy, Gianni. Yeah! <laughs> love Gianni. He is a maniac. For those of you who know him, you can attest to that. Um, but I wouldn't expect anything less from my son. Love you, pal. Going to give the wives a shout out for for being able to watch the boys and let us do this. So my my wife Jillian, Mike's wife Allie, and um, and Nick's wife. 
to be determined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast. No, honestly, his wife. honestly, <laughs> your wives are the real MVPs. For real. Honestly, like, like hands down. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. And another shout out for Phil. Fucking legend, guys. That's our producer, technical director. Salute. Absolutely amazing work. And he's the reason why, like, this this stuff is just amazing. Okay. Another shout out. One more time for Just Ant. Follow him at Just Ant on Instagram. And I mean, wow, the, the intro and the outro for for us, that intro outro Amazing. song is fucking fire. That's my boy, man. I'm not surprised. I absolutely oh, man. not. Like, it's just amazing. I get the chills every time I hear it. So talented. But He's I'm, awesome, man. with that, guys, keep I'm chasing pass, your dream, bro. Yeah, please, by all means. I'm going to pass it off to Nick now, though. Thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate that. Thank you guys for the birthday shout outs. Uh, I love you guys. You guys have been amazing. Um, it's been my favorite birthday by far. I'm doing something different that I've never done Should before. Be. It's been super fun. Um, it's everything that I thought it was going to be. So I'm looking forward to the journey to more episodes. Also, I want to shout out my boy, Phil, for uh, producing. Um, he's been awesome for us. He's been such an integral part for us, you know, putting all this together. Um, cause I have no idea what's going on in the tech world. So <laughs> we'll leave it to Phil. So, uh, but yeah, with that, we're going to wrap it up. Um, please like subscribe and also hit the notification bell to receive instant updates when we drop new content. Don't forget to, uh, subscribe on Spotify and Apple podcast. And also don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we will see you all next week at PNI.